Hey guys, welcome to a quick 5 tip video that's spoiler free for Dark Souls 2. This video is aimed to help new players, but there are things here that I definitely didn't notice hours after I got past this section in the game. So hopefully I keep this spoiler free. Please try and keep the comments spoiler free. We're trying to help people here. Alright, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is one of the first areas that you can actually get to in Things Betwixt. So, it's right there on your left, you're going to walk past it most likely, and you're going to need a weapon to go there. So you're going to go through this little hole here, and up, like, these tracks that obviously show you something's fucking wrong here. You don't want to go here if you're not ready for it. But there's an ogre waiting for you at the top. You kill him, he drops an awesome ring that increases your attack on poise. So basically, your weapons are going to stagger your enemies more than often than if you weren't wearing this ring. It's a very cool ring, I really, I really like the idea, and it's just a good item to have because staggering your opponents is really useful. While you're also here though, you can find gold pine resin right next to you in this body, and it's just a quick loot, and basically you use that and it gives your weapon, your main weapon, lightning damage, which just increases the damage you do, and if you're having issues with the boss, and you just feel like you need that little bit of extra damage, this is exactly what you need. So you only got one, so make it count. Alright, so for number two, we're going to talk about smooth and silky. So they're in this nest here. You may have found them in your playthrough. And basically what you do is you give them something smooth and or silky, and they'll give you something back. So you throw something in, something random pops out. Maybe you get a Titanite shard. Maybe you get, I don't know, a decapitated head. Who knows? Hopefully you get the Titanite shard out of the two, come on. Um, but if you're not sure where to get one and you're not sure how to tell, simply read the description of your items. If you hover over an item and press square or for an Xbox, I guess it's X, um, you just uh, hover over an item, look at the description, and if it says it's smooth and or silky or something along those lines, here's an example, a smooth and silky stone that you find right here under this waterfall that you may very well have missed. I found this randomly in my first playthrough. Um, very well hidden next to the hut and you just get go get that and then you go back to the nest and then you just have to leave the item. Now it's crucial that you leave the item. If you discard it like I did on my first attempt, you destroy the item. You have to leave it on the ground for it to drop on the ground. So you just stand over the nest, toggle on leave, drop the item and then pick up what they give you back. And, uh, well, good luck with what you get back, because sometimes you can get some awesome shit, sometimes you can get garbage. Okay, on to the third tip. It's pretty simple, this. Now, I'm sorry if this doesn't help you and you say, well, no shit to me. But this is to do with torches. So you can find torches on the ground throughout the whole playthrough. And you can actually find one right here next to the bonfire. It's like a car and you just destroy the car. So you go over to the bonfire and when you stood next to the bonfire, it's like sit at bonfire or rest at bonfire. But there's also an option to toggle. So that's Y or triangle for controller players on your different consoles. Um, so you just press toggle and then it's like light your torch. Pretty simple, right? I didn't find this out till five hours into the game. I was pretty pissed. I kept finding torches everywhere and had no idea how to light them. Um, and I really knew, I knew about the effect having played the game before it came out and I didn't know how to light them in this new system they put in. So yeah, it's pretty simple. You just get your torch. And there's a time limit on them, by the way. To check that, you just open your inventory and there's like a little timer in this box here. Um, and you can also find these brazers and you can light them. And it's sort of like a checkpoint system. And it's really nice because you light up the area. And all, it also shows the way a little bit better. It's like uh, if you've ever known the book Labyrinth where there's a minotaur in a labyrinth. It's like leaving... A, a trail behind you so you can find your way, except the trail is your bon your light, basically. It's really cool, especially in dark areas. So that's how you mess with torches. I know it seems obvious, but I fucked that up big okay, time. Okay, on to number four. So, talking about ogres again. Now, down this area here is basically a tree that you can kick over and it unlocks the shortcut. So, I guess I'll show a speeded up version of me getting to this tree and kicking it over. But I'm pretty sure if you spend some time in Things Betwixt, you'll find it anyway. Um, and then you unlock this shortcut. This shortcut leads down to an area with two ogres. You can probably see one as you walk down by like the water. But there's one hidden around this corner here. And yeah, he's pretty pissed off at you. Both of them are going to aggro at the same time. Do not fight them both at the same time unless you, you know what the fuck you're doing. I tried. It's very hard. 
um, with low damage and the amount of damage they do, you just don't want to do it. So here's how I deal with it. I get one of them to follow me all the way back up to that log we kicked up over and then stand just in front of the log before crossing over so that they still come. And then I sort of duke it into attacking, it'll like start attacking me and then fall forward on its face. Now this can be annoying, it can fall over on its face multiple times on the log. You just keep duking that attack and eventually it'll fall off right off the side and immediately die. And then you've only got one to deal with. You can do the same method for killing the final second one, but I personally prefer to fight them and you may as well get good at fighting them now because, you know, there's going to be harder opponents in the game than these, so you may as well learn how to fight them. So just kill that and then you find this coffin behind him and you get into it and you're probably not sure what ha what just happened. Well, it's pretty simple. You just change to a girl or a guy depending on what you were prior to getting into the coffin. That's right, you get into this coffin, you change gender. So you may want to go back and get back in it if you did that the first playthrough. I've seen so many comments about how they forgot to go get in a second time, didn't notice the effect the first time. I personally found it, got in, was confused, wasn't sure what happened, thought I'd try again, got in a second time, got out, had no idea what happened and left. I got very lucky, I got very lucky, changed back into my starting gender which was a guy so yeah there you go so you can change your uh, gender late game if you wish to all right for the fifth and final tip it's going to be the quickest out of all of them i think in the first starting area our new phylum shrine or the nexus essentially it is a hub and it's called medulla so in medulla you can find this well at, by the back it's the house on the key name that you find eventually um, or referred to as the mansion. So the mansion by the big hall, very near back at the back building. It's big, you'll notice it. Um, and there's this well right in front of it. As you can see here, there's this, like, this rock that's like got a rope around it and it's like going over and it's weird and shit. Hit that rock, body comes out, there's some loot. It's an Estus Flask Shard. You need these to get more Estus Flask. You're gonna notice that you only start the game with one. And it is fucking hell. I love how the Estus Flasks are so much more like hard to find now and you start with one and you have to earn these Estus Flasks. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, you're gonna need these shards. I would definitely recommend getting this one. Having two Estus Flasks is so fucking helpful at the start of the game. So smack that rock, get your shard, Give it to the Emerald Herald and she'll turn it into a second Estus Flask. Alright guys, those are my five tips. So if you would like to leave a comment saying this helped you, please do, or leave a like. But what I would love for you to do is if there's some sort of starting tip that I've not mentioned in this video and you think would be really helpful to new players, please leave a comment. Maybe you'll help someone and who knows, maybe there'll be enough of these comments for me to make another video about it. So okay, right, that'll do. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Good luck in Dark Souls. Praise the sun.